Welcome, my food mood friends, Chandra Zas, and we have Dr. Yotam Tamari with us today. Thank you so much, Yotam, for being here, Dr. Yotam. This is the month of, of March, which is in the heart of springtime. And so today we're going to be diving into the topic of detoxing, which is a natural process that happens in our bodies at this time of year in the Northern Hemisphere. <laughs> and we're going to talk with Yotam and ask him what his perception is and how he sees detoxing and this time of year and really through a Chinese medicine perspective and of course his own life experience as well. Welcome. Here is your hostess and coach, Chandra Zas, helping people make food and mood changes doable without missing out. Go ahead, high five that like button, subscribe and share while you're there. Thank you, Yotam, for being here. Thank you so much for hosting me. My total pleasure. So I'd love to start with, I, I like I know this and I, and a lot of the content that I provide does talk about like springtime being a natural time where our bodies naturally detox. And that one of the best things that we can do is kind of support our body through this natural process at this time of year. So I'd love to hear your perspective on it and what that, what that looks like to you and, and your stories and sh please share. Yes. Um, so we spoke about a little bit last time about the season and how and how they affecting us and we spoke about how not to resist the natural forces that affecting us in all certain and uh, dimensions in the physical in the mental so springtime speaks about bursting energy like we're seeing in nature after after raining and and it's starting to be a little bit more hot flowers starting to bloom. Hello, my friend, how are you? I'm in the Dead Sea floating in the water. Go ahead and like and share and follow so we can keep in touch. It's a rebirthing. It's a actually rebirthing of nature that happen in cycle every year. So the same we have in our body. So springtime speaks about that, about um, birth of new, new things, ideas, um, actions that we want to, to take um, and that time of year speaks about lightness because winter time was so heavy so contract so condensed and from that place we're bursting out so we really need to leave the mentality of winter behind and think about the new mentality of spring so if we're speaking about a mentality of of rebirthing and lightness and light and, and, and flow, like really strong flow everywhere through every direction. So if we're speaking about the physical term, we need to think about a light nutrition and how we can um, affect our body in as much as we can to get it more, um, just to get it more light so he can be um, aligned with the spring energies and, and, and effects. So if we're speaking about, yes. You will, you go into, will you go into the foods? Which foods would you recommend are better to keep our body light and support ourselves at this yes. time of year? So, so actually every person really needs to investigate what, what foods makes him feel more light. For me, I know if I'm eating bread in a, in a meal, doesn't matter how much bread I'm eating, it will get me um, heavy. Part so, particularly at this time of year or? In general, in general. Yeah. So in winter time, I can really um, give myself some slack and, and say, okay, now it's the time. Now it's the time to be heavy. Now it's the time to be condensed. Now it's the time to be full and be happy about it and not judgmental for myself. But in, in the springtime, it should be really my, my uh, important view on my nutrition to stay light. So really my advice for springtime is to divide the food, is to eat slow, really slow and 
and to stop before before we're getting full it's really it's a really um, it's a really difficult thing to do but to be really minded about it so so Can I, I won't why? why is it important to stop before you're full I'd love to hear your perspective yeah so if we if we're thinking about springtime is as a potential of energy a potential of bursting energy everywhere of rebirthing so so the slight the the smallest thing that I can do to help my body is to stay light mm. and food is the main um, is the main physical term that we how we feel towards our body light or heavy it's a big meal it's a small meal it's a nutrition meal it's a shitty meal really junk food meal so we really need to think about it and if in winter time I was not judgmental and I maybe three or four times a week I was really heavy on, on after meal in springtime I really need to decline it to one time a week let's say Friday night not judgmental for one for one time uh, for the week and why is that only because I want to be aligned with nature only because I want not to interfere with the energies that are affecting me. So really to divide the meals. So I won't be feeling heavy. And the feeling of, of uh, being full is really, truly only mental. Most of the time, reality is tough on us. Reality makes us deal with our emotions, which for most of us is really difficult. So the feeling of fullness of food really helps us to forget from all of our worries, from all of our difficulties, from all of our problems. So this is all, this is all misconception, yeah? Well, it, 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 it we it's totally normal to use it to feel better like in the moment like feeling full has this like comforting feeling that's like more emotionally based which i think is like what exactly what you're saying versus like what our actually bodies really need but it's a misconception to 100%. To, to to understand that this is solving our problems yeah it's much more of a cover up much more of yeah. a yeah i love that you brought that in that's really cool actually covering up covering every space of our body with food so most of the people think that they really need to eat that they really need to feel full so they will be feeling nutrition but actually when we are feeling too full really if it's if it's getting us too heavy and we are feeling tired and we want to sleep it means that the food that we ate is becoming waste instead of nutrition um, ingredients the body can't cope with that and it's just becoming waste and then we go into the bathroom and, and it just go out and it doesn't nutrition us the way it should so we understand that in each season the body needs certain amounts of food and nutrition to nutrition itself and if it's too much aligned to that energy of the season it doesn't know how to what to do with that yeah the way i like to say it is that it like makes our body work extra hard it's like puts extra work on our body extra work and less efficiency yeah yeah would you go into you mentioned bread are there any other particular foods that you recommend in the springtime yes so springtimes speaking about rebirthing and rebirthing, when we look at nature and plants, it's, it's from the seed. The seed has everything it needs, the plant needs. It has all the nutrition and, and, and ingredients. It has the potential. It has the environment. So the seed really symbolizes everything that the body needs to, to go out for a new way, for a new path, a, a, a new birth. So springtime speaks about bursting. So actually in springtime, we don't need a lot of protein. So people is ill, people who has anemia, it's a different story. But if a person is healthy, we actually don't need 
to put too much protein on our body. We need much more carbs and, and more um, fat. And just to clarify there, just to make every sure everyone, everyone here listening is on the same page, is that protein is heavy. Protein has like a heavy quality, which is a really good winter food. Whereas because protein is heavy, it's not so great in the springtime when we're focusing more on the light foods. Exactly. And, and then I also want to clarify because you said carbs earlier, but then you said bread. So in the springtime, carbs, which form of carbs are best in the springtime? Yeah. Yeah. So if we're th thinking about bread, bread is a low, um, low percent. It's a low percent value of uh, carbs. Low it's, nutrients. It gives us, it gives us maybe a big amount of carbs, but the body needs to cope with that and to inject a lot of insulin to the blood to use that uh, energy. So, so bread is a really low efficiency uh, substance for carbs. So if we're thinking about really valuable and nutritional carbs for, for spring times, it will be vegetables, fruits, um, seeds, beans, what you said? Seeds? Yeah. Um, um, a whole, a whole wheat, uh, a whole rice, whole grain, whole wheat. Um, but mostly vegetables and fruits. Um, also, lentils is really good. It's really, it's really more uh, protein, but it has also uh, carbs. And lentils is a really good substance for the whole time of the year. It's really light on the body. Um, it's a complete protein, I also believe. You get the, yeah. the it's uh, and, unlike and the other beans, lentils have like the complete protein aspect. So they're really a great food to eat all year. Yeah. So for many people, so for many people, the idea of um, staying light is maybe to eat two meals a day. Maybe. For others, it will be to, to, uh, to eat less and to eat more meals, four or five meals a day. For, for, for a third one, it will be um, to munchies, um, carrots and cucumber a few times a day, just to feel light and to feel that they ate something. So it's really different, it's really differentiate for every person. So how would you recommend to someone to figure out kind of how their, what their body needs? Like everyone so the kind first of- thing, The first thing for springtime is to, to really reduce protein from the, from the animal kingdom. Eggs, chicken, fish, meat, all of that reduce. Cheese. If, if in winter time I ate every day, protein from the animal kingdom. So now it will be one in the second day or the third day. So I'm not, I'm not saying to go into a vegetarian or vegan, but that will be the most efficient way to get the body more light. So I want to clarify my question. So if there's kind of the general guidelines that we've set out about eating less protein, eating less heavy food, eating less bread, focusing on the lighter foods, but then you said that for everybody has their unique thing. So some people might eat five meals, some people eat, might eat two meals. So what, what kind of tip or trick can you give for someone who's wanting to figure out what does their body need the best? Am I someone who needs five meals? Am I someone who needs two meals? Would you have a, an advice on how to figure that out for an individual person? Yes. So the first, the first that I will recommend is to investigate. Is to take time, like two weeks time, to investigate the nutrition part for springtime. So to try, to give it a try. Like um, if a person is walking uh, 10 hours a day, and he knows that if he's eating during the work time, he's feeling very heavy. So to try to say, okay, to eat something in that amount of time, but to eat really something small, two dates, two carrots, to take a, to take a break and to eat their meal before and after. Or um, to take time to see which in two times, in two weeks time, to see which foods 
makes him extra heavy. And so, then he will know to avoid them much more. Okay, so what you're offering is that someone, invest, your, your word is investigate, but tries out a certain way. And then they're tra- like what they're looking for is how it's affecting their energy levels. How do they feel after the meal or that day? And even over the span of a couple of weeks, what are your energy someday. levels like? And in, during that time and in investigation, the most important thing that we want to um, to come to come closer to the feeling that we are light. That's our most important um, a point that we want to get into when we're investigating our body during springtime. Great. Can we talk a little bit about detoxing? Like yes. What- yeah, so how does yes. this connect to detoxing? How it can connect it to the, the... So if we're speaking about winter time, that we want to feed ourselves with, with heavy foods and, and mm-hmm. meat. Mm-hmm. Yes, a lot of red, red meat. So it takes time for the body to, to cleanse from the waste that um, protein from the animal kingdoms creates in our body. So detoxification is a crucial part during springtime because it makes us feel more light. So we have a few organs that related to detoxification, which is mainly three organs, but the whole body is doing it. The upper one is the lung. The middle one is the liver. And the lower one is the large intestine. These are the most three uh, organs that that affecting uh, the deto- detoxification. And I will explain a little bit about each and every one of them. The lungs is doing it well, the whole year round with our breath. We're bringing life force energy with uh, inhalation and with expand- um, exhalation, expelling waste, CO2. So this is detoxification. For a person, which his body is filling with waste, his uh, breath will be much more rapid because the body wants to get rid of the waste. Mm. If we're eating a lot, so the metabolism is really high, and then during um, the manufacture uh, of energy, a lot of CO2 is um, extracting to the blood, and then we need to expel it through the the breath. So maybe after I will give also a breathing exercise, especially for that. I also had that thought. Okay, well, I'll I'll note that. And and after that is the liver. The liver is, is in task of cleaning up the blood, cleaning up the blood and to be the filter of our body. And actually everything that we put inside of our body go through the the liver. And the liver, what it does, it's breaking down everything into parts and giving label into everything it's it's, uh, um, falling apart. um, Breaking down. The the things that we put inside, yeah. So if we're putting a lot of things in our body, the liver will need to do more work and and to put more labels. So if we're eating less, or if we're eating in a meal, less foods, let's say only rice and vegetables, or rice and few vegetables and not a big salad. So we're not giving a lot of work to the liver. We're we're easing on him. So that's, that's a really um, crucial part in de- detoxification that we can help our, our body and our liver. When we're eating, when we're putting stuff inside to put um, less, less, um, less substance. Let's say, let, like I said, to eat a, a few, few uh, numbers of foods in our plate. And and the additional thing that will help the the liver is to drink a lot of water. As much as our blood is um, full of water, 
the flow of the blood will be much more efficient. And we know that everything that comes inside of the liver comes through the blood. And if the blood is thick and not moving right, it will also affect the liver. So really drinking water is, is crucial for the whole, the whole year around, but we can explain in each season how it affects the body and how it helps the body. Um, can I add in one piece? So I, you're, you're, you're pretty much saying almost exactly what I, what I say and teach, but that basically like when we take the workload, so when we're eating lighter, when we're eating less, when we're eating lighter foods, the way that I like to talk about it is that it like allows the liver to do its natural detoxification process. So it's kind of like just decrease the workload. So then it can go to work on doing its natural thing, which is detoxing. Is yes. When we overload it, then it has a harder time doing its job. And when we take the workload off, it's, it does its, yeah. And really in springtime in Chinese medicine, that's the time of the liver. That's the time that the liver is getting expression, full expression. So, so really this is need to be in our mind in springtime, how our liver feels. Um, Are there so the things that we can do to help extra to help the liver is to to eat more sour things like lemon, like uh, fruits, like orange and um, citrus. Yes. So, so this is really like you said. It's just helping the liver do its job. The other foods that I know about, which I'm curious, I don't think it's from Chinese medicine, but the other foods that I know are really good for the liver detox are like the radish family, the radishes, like the daikon and the radishes, and then also the bitter greens, like the arugula yes, yes. and the, the, the most, the more bitter, the greens, the better. Exactly. Because bitter, the taste bitter makes us urinate. And when we urinate, we expel, we expel waste. So it also helps the body to get rid of the waste during that, the, during that time. And really, we can eat bitter greens every meal. Like I'm, if I'm eating a breakfast with eggs, so I can add to the egg. If I'm eating a salad in the, in, in the afternoon, I can eat it with the greens. If I'm making a shake, I can put a kale or mangold or everything I want inside. Mangold is chard for, for the non-Israelis here. <laughs> okay. Yeah, the so, bitter. And after that, we can speak about the large intestine. The large intestine doing the most job to get rid of the waste, um, the physical actual waste, and really the large intestine and the liver connects. The liver has um, a system that's called the portal vein system of the liver. And this system all speaks about cleaning the large intestine. So the liver and the large intestine has a relationship, a closed relationship in our body that's, that's happening like a ping pong between them, only between them. So as much as we have waste in our body, the liver as much as we have waste in the large intestine, the liver will do extra job to clean it. As much as the large intestine will be clean and less with waste, so the liver can do much more uh, efficient work. So they're really related on each other. The large intestine is more related to detoxification because it's connected to the liver. And also it's, it's, really, uh, it's really pretty much the same as like we said when we spoke about the liver, um, about, about the foods and, and, and how much we eat. 
Yeah, the way that I've heard it explained is that like the like we want our pathways of elimination open, which you know you want to be pooping regularly, basically. And the more empty the the large intestine is, then the liver, because the liver dumps from the li from the liver into the large intestine. So the more that's open, then the liver kind of like has its place to like drain and move out. Something like that. Yeah. And also, if we're speaking about the blood flow that also related to the liver, so as much as the large intestine is open and the portal system, the vein portal of the liver is flowing and not stuck with waste, so it really affects the, the blood flow that we have. And if the, 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 the flow of blood is, is free and without uh, resistance, so that's really the essence of springtime. Free flow everywhere, no resistance, expansion. And letting go, free flow and letting go of all the winter. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. Okay. So really, so we, we have th those three. Um, and I know that you, that you recommend to your patients and your... Um, yeah, to your patients to do a um, coffee enema, enema right? coffee enema. enema to clean to clean the large intestine. I do it, it could be really special and good time of the year to do it in that time of March, April. To support the body and letting in the detoxing. And actually, one of the really cool things I love that you brought in the portal vein because one of the pieces of a coffee enema is to lay on your right side. So that the idea is that the coffee enema like the goes into the portal vein and it encourages and allows the liver to dump. It's like very like coffee enemas specifically are very targeted towards the liver. I know that like coffee enemas are not in the Chinese medicine world, but thanks for bringing that in. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. And coffee's a bitter from, you know, especially from an enema medicinal point. So it also kind of like encourages the, the detoxification. So. Yeah. I have another question. Are you, or do you have something on your mind? No, I just wanted to say that it's much more healthy to, to use the coffee in that way instead of drinking it. But maybe we can speak about it much more. We can speak about it much more later. Perfect. I'd love for to hear, and I'm putting you a little bit on the spot here, but I'd love to hear like um, some of the emotional components of detoxing. Like if the liver is like, I know that in Chinese medicine, there's a lot of emotional connection to the different organs. And so I'd love you to just touch a little bit on like, if someone's kind of either just naturally detoxing or even maybe intentionally helping their body detox some more and like what potentially emotionally might come up for them. Yes, it's a perfect question. So we really know that the physical term is connected directly into the mental and spiritual Term. So really in Chinese medicine, they divide every emotion into an organ. So the, the emotion of the liver is anger. Anger, frustration, and in that evolution, compassion. So, and really who is in charge of all of these emotions is the heart. So they both, the heart and the liver, they both in charge of the emotions. And I'll explain why also the liver. Because the liver is the organ of springtime. And we're speaking about springtime, which is expansion into every direction, a healthy movement of flow in our body, which related to every term, every term. It means it's related also to the terms of flow of emotions. So a person that's making a really good job of making detox detoxification during springtime will feel a flow of emotion, really not getting stuck with his emotion and really a, a platform and potential of being able to feel his emotion and pass through them. Okay, something is bringing up. I'm being sad because something happened in my life. I'm being sad and then I'm feeling it and pass through it. Processing. A process of emotion is to go through it in every turn, to feel it 
and pass through it. Because really, we are not our emotion. The emotion is a dimension that we speak through, but we are not it. So it's really important to understand that we are communicate and expressing ourselves through emotion, but we are not the emotion. I love that you're bringing in that point. Yeah. So springtime speaks about expansion. So it's, it could be really expansion of emotion and really allowing ourselves in that time to feel and not be judgmental towards our emotions. So if someone is detoxing, and let's say it's someone that's kind of like maybe on the more sick side, so maybe it's not someone who's like in just like a normal year cycle going through, but maybe someone's like intentionally doing like a liver detox, they're doing juices, they're maybe doing liver flushes, or they're doing something to kind of encourage their body to further detox. What would you, I mean, if you say that anger is the emotion of the liver, anger, frustration, and I guess on the healthy side, it would be compassion. So if someone's having like going through like a detox moment, it would it be normal to expect maybe some anger coming out of the liver? Yes. If the anger was suppressed during lifetime, that will be a time if a person is doing uh, the internal work of detox detoxification, anger can come up. And my advice for that is to be more compassion towards thyself during that time. Because anger is the opposite of love. When we angry, we don't give enough compassion towards parts of our body that now something trigger anger. Like say, like my mother now uh, triggering anger towards me. Like she's triggering in me anger. It means that she's right, that she's saying something that, that I know it's right. But instead of giving love and to say, wow, she's right. Wow, I need to think about it. Oh, well, maybe, maybe she has something in her words. Instead of being angry and to throw at her all of what I can't cope with. So really love and compassion is the crucial key to deal with, with anger. So in the internal work, um, like you said about the person that's now dealing with that anger, the most um, efficient tip that I can give is to write. Because writing is also a flow, right? Writing is a flow of, of expressing. So I don't really need to be angry at someone to express my anger. I can express it while writing, and then I'm also practicing flow. And I know that practicing flow during springtime, that's aligns aligned with with nature it would i'm guessing that you're going to agree with this but i'm guessing that in the in as writing is one tool for processing and and creating flow i would imagine that exercise and movement is another way to process and yeah. and get into flow and create that it's also like the it's like such a great time of year to exercise and be outside and, and being outside walking walking is the most important thing that we can do to our body in every term in the uh, emotional terms in the physical term we our body is built for walking when we're safe, while we're we healthy. walking mm -hmm. while we walk the body function in his most full potential we breathe the best and we don't need to notice and the digestion is working perfectly the, the, the blood flows uh, without uh, stress and resistance. Everything becomes natural when, while, we walk, while, while we walk. The lymph system is really stimulated when we walk. Yeah, walking is just so crucial. And if we can do it in nature, that's the biggest bonus that we can have. <laughs> Definitely. Definitely. Nature is the best. <laughs> Amazing. Okay, so we have eat light food, eat to the goal of feeling light. 
in the springtime to support our body's natural time of year of detoxification. Eat light, eat lighter foods, walk, Expressing. do exercise, express. I think that that's like the good summary. Drinking water. Drinking, drinking water and, and, and eating foods. Did, were there any, I am, I'm actually curious, are there any other foods besides the radishes and the bitters and the citrus? Are there any other foods Chinese medicine talks about for supporting detoxing? No, I think we said, we said enough. And I think that's really the baseline that we can step into springtime. Nice. Amazing. So can I ask you one last question? Bevakasha, yes. So give me, if you wouldn't mind being so generous with sharing your personal, like what's one kind of thing that you, or maybe you do, maybe you do everything we just talked about, but like, what is one of your personal practices that you're stepping into for the spring to support your body's detox? So for me, it's, it's really about nature because, because during springtime, nature comes alive. It's really the part of the, the year when we have everything blooming, it's like coming outside of the dead. And that can awaken inside of our body the feeling of rebirthing. And I think that we are in nature, we're becoming, we're coming back home. We're coming back to the place which is most natural for us. So, and for me, it's easy. I'm living by the forest, I'm going outside, I'm seeing everything blooming. It's really uplifting the, my soul. It's really, uh, I'm in, in, nature, in nature, I'm free of judgment. I'm free of um, and principles and contracts and responsibility. I'm clean. I'm um, becoming one with nature. And I think that's, that's what really heals me during springtime. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah, I love nature. I, I do. I feel like it's such medicine, such medicine. Yeah. yeah. Ah, and I wanted to give you a breathing exercise for, uh, for springtime. Perfect. So it's really easy. I'm taking a big inhale. With the lips tight. Yeah, it's okay. And then I'm stopping the breath for a few seconds. And then I'm contracting the lips and I'm expelling the, the air with slight amount. Until I'm really empty out of CO2 and then another big inhalation. Stop for a few seconds. And then expe expelling slowly every time small amount of CO2. until I'm feeling really, really empty. And then again, I really recommend do it like five to six times a day. If a person wants to do more, there is no problem. And really immediately after the practice, we will feel that the lungs is getting open and the, the breath becoming much more steady. That's a really easy method to purify our, our lungs to expel every waste that there is. We talked about this, I'm pretty sure it's this exact same breathing thing for activating focus. Yeah, that's so exactly. Why is that? Why is that? Because focus is brightness. And what's the opposite of brightness? Mercury, right? How do you say it in English? Um, murkiness. Murkiness, that's the exact thing. So we're speaking about this, the exact same thing <clears throat> and i can give another thing which also really purifying another uh, breathing exercise it's 30 breath divided into five 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 times times six and i would explain i'm doing four superficial breath from the nose and then the fifth one will be a big one And another one.
So we have four, four times superficial breath. And then the fifth one, big inhalation and big exhalation. Immediately after, another four and another one. And, and then we have, we have six times five breaths. This is also really purifying the, the lungs. And this is also a calming exercise. Really brings us back, grounds the body. Um, yeah. Beautiful. Is there a particular time of day that either of these breathing techniques are, are recommended? The best time is to do it in, uh, in morning. Both of them. Both of them best in morning. Morning time is the time of spring because mm -hmm. morning time is the rebirthing of the day. Mm -hmm. So that's really the, the, the time of the day when we have much more potential to be aligned with spring, spring energies, to go outside in nature in, in morning time, to write down in morning time, to dance in morning time. That's the best time of expression and feeling light and, and expansion. And then we can really take, take that uh, feeling for the rest of the day. Beautiful. Yes. Beautiful. Yay. Thank you, Yotam. You're welcome. Dr. Yotam. <laughs> All right. I think that that's a, we, we, we thought maybe we didn't have much to talk about, but I think we had a lot to talk about. <laughs> any, any, I'd, I'd like to wrap up. Anything else that you... Are you? No, I think we said enough. And really, I'm open up for question if someone wants to ask questions and to uh, to get a personal advice. Yeah, yeah. If you want to look for Dr. Yotam Tamari, his email will be below this video. And then also, maybe what I'll actually start doing is I'll tag you in all of the videos so that then you also see the comments. Let's figure out how to make that happen so that you get Perfect. notified of comments. That would be awesome. So yeah, if you guys have any questions or comments, please, 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 please bring them. And we would love to help you out, answer your questions. And yeah, have a beautiful day, everyone. Thank you for your time and attention. Thank you so much, Dr. Tamari, for your time and attention. And we'll see you next time. Bye.